I, I get distracted thinking to myself, oh, well, I know I recently started in these, these, these Sunday streams uh, on the hour, but I think my schedule still says that I start on the half hour, right? So I can, I can wait until like this build stuff is sorted out. I want to start at the normal time. And then about five minutes ago, <laughs> I went back and looked at my schedule. And no, no, I had updated it to say I was starting, starting at 8 a.m. my time. So, whoops. Anyway, I'm sitting here messing with uh, the build in Docker. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically, um, trying various things that aren't working. Uh, because at some point, at some point, uh, well, I think always the Rust version arg was here, but I added also Debian version to the Docker file, uh, so that we could like not just use latest. Because I think that's why the builds always take so long, because I'm 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 doing this like once a week, and so there, there's probably like version bumps, and so that invalidates all of the cached layers. Uh, but yeah, so what I was trying to do, what I was thinking, oh, this is how it works, right? Is like pass environment variables, <laughs> but they're, they're not environment variables. They're arguments, right? Just like the service name is an argument. So what I need to do on the containers, on the containers where it makes sense, like all the ones where we're using Docker file is pass the argument like this equals like that yeah hold on music's a little loud okay maybe that's okay and then just the, the, the same thing over and over again. Let's do like that. So this is this is the downside of having all these as separate services, this duplication versus rolling them into one, uh, one backend. So I don't know, we'll see. I might, I might change that at some point. Uh, the flip side of that is we definitely have one backend service. I'm going to read that message in a second. One backend service here. Um, it's not listed right now in this branch, but the, the one where I'm using Elixir and it's the Twitch, uh, the thing that interacts with the Twitch API and, and reads chat is basically a chat bot um, that would, that needs to be a different service, it's a different language. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, all that. Okay, is that question? Did I actually? Yeah, good. Okay, so that seems fine. And good news. All right, so we're gonna stop the build and start the build again. And failed because I removed common variables. Where was that left? Aha. And here, I was like, well, if I'm defining these common variables, maybe I want to pass them in to uh, the other services, but we're not doing that now. All right, cool. Uh, Death Row says, I've been using the Dracula theme so long, it's always strange to see someone else's. There's a Dracula theme?
Dracula. There's lots of Dracula themes. Oh, look at that. The official one? Nah, it's a little purple for me. Little, little purple. Kind of maybe higher contrast there. Like the syntax colors. Yeah, kind of pastel thing going on versus like this one, Draco Dark. Uh, let's see. Anyway, yeah, I'm using a uh, solar. So, wh which one am I currently using? <laughs> Solarized dark something or other. There are a few of those as well. Let's see here. Ooh. God. Dark italics? Interesting. Braver Solaris Arc? Yeah, no kidding. Ah. Okay, that, that's... Espresso Soda. You think that's dark or light? Oh, it's definitely light. Oh, no. Solarized Minimal Dark. Which one am I using? <laughs> the Atom One Dark. Uh, uh, Atom One. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, contrasting this to... This. I don't know. I'm happy with this. What, what theme is this that I'm using? It's just the uh, built-in solarized dark. Ooh, what is red? <laughs> no, it's too blue. Dark high contrast. That might be better for the stream, honestly. <laughs> Used to make you go uh, theme swapping 30 minutes. To, yeah. I honestly have not looked at themes and like. Uh. Like, if you had not seen, said anything, I probably would not have looked at themes. Uh, I don't know, maybe never again. Okay, are we... We're, we're gonna be here for a minute. Uh, still building. Uh, but while that's going on, yeah, I got other things we can look at. Ooh. So many... Right websites. I haven't in a while since I've been so since I've seen so many of them. I just like the Dracula one, so I stay with that one. Yep. Yeah, I guess that's, that's me with Solarized. Mm. Be in and out playing Stellaris. Nice. It's been a while. I I fired it up. I fired up Solaris, um, Stellaris, <laughs> uh, within the last year, but I don't have any of the, the DLC, right? So, um, probably not going to do that. 
Paradox has already got me buying all of the, the EU4 DLC and the CK3 DLC, so that, that's enough. Just got started on it, really. I've had it for years, but never sat down to the time to learn it. Yeah. I played, like, a campaign when it was newish, I think. Um, and I've played games of that kind of similar genre years and years ago. I forget the names of them. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Just didn't have the... <laughs> I guess uh, EU4 pulled me back. There's like 20 DLCs now, yeah. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> I just bought the newest, uh, um, uh, was it When's the Change DLC for EU4 yesterday. Started a new campaign. EU4, Europa Universalis. <clears throat> yep. Yes. Which I have many thousands of hours in. <laughs> another paradox uh, grand strategy game more historically focused you play as a nation uh, between 1444 and 18 20 something 21 yeah anyway so glowing telegram the thing I want to do next I think once we get the, the build stuff sorted out, is um, I can't even pull it up, can I? I think I have it all shut down right now. Are we still building? Aha. Um, okay, so I don't think Alpine is gonna work for the containers. So that's the thing. I think I said, oh, let's try uh, Alpine. So let's let's not try Alpine for the rest version. Oops. No, nope, still want that though. Okay, yeah. Silly me. Let's just do a better find and replace. Try this again. Okay, that's gonna have us redo a lot of uh, build, maybe. Okay, so anyway. Um, so right now you can go and you can take an episode in Glowing Telegram and you can tell it to upload to YouTube. And it uploads the video file to YouTube, it populates the title and the description, uh, theoretically adds the playlist to it as well, uh, puts it in the right order. Although I've not actually fully tested that because the last time I think this was on stream last time too. We were testing that and the, um, there was some issue and it wasn't clear what the issue was until I did a little bit of digging and there's a separate case where there's like a, a daily rate limit for the API and apparently, well, <laughs> uploading a video uses a bunch of quota, right? Typically you think of like, oh, you know, you have a certain number of requests per second, or requests per minute, or requests per day. But with the, the Google API for YouTube, uh, well, their APIs in general, I guess, I don't know, but specifically this one, it's based on a, um, you have a certain number of units of resource that you use up when you call an API. And this one, the upload video one, ha uses a lot, right? So you effectively, with the default um, quota, you are um, only going to be able to upload a couple of videos in a day, apparently. Um, which is probably fine, eventually. 
Um, but that's why I did add something to the to the backlog here uh, somewhere. There we go, manage YouTube upload quotas. So some way, I mean, we already have a task queue. We might need something to regulate. Um, how often we're trying to do certain tasks, like let them buffer up and then monitor, essentially mirror that quota in the task um, queuing system in Glowing Telegram so that we can queue up, you know, if I have a live stream, that's gonna be potentially several different uh, videos to upload. Uh, and at least right now, I'm actually processing, like I'm going through like multiple light, like I'm trying to do a week at a time to try to catch up since I'm, I have like a several months backlog of videos to, to upload. So I would want to select nine to 12 videos, episodes, click upload, and they would queue up and they would upload based on based on the, um, the rate limit, right? So we need to figure that out to make this really hands off, which is really the whole point. Okay, this track is all over the place with volume. Okay, anyway, um, how goes this? We're more than halfway done. Um, right, so I think I drifted off of the topic, which was originally this item. So associate series to stream, populate series into episodes and add next index values, right? So the workflow right now is you're on a stream record in Glowing Telegram. You can select or auto select the segments of the stream to split out into episodes. You click a button, it creates the episode records to tie back to the series, but with the timestamps of like start and end, right? Um, and ties back to the stream, right? So what we don't have is a way to associate a stream into Kind of a series uh because typically i've well, I've, I've had some you know one off or two off streams right where it's just like hey this stream we're, we're doing this right but most of the majority of my streams are like a continuation like this stream uh of a project or a playthrough so being able to link all the streams together in glowing telegram uh, into one thing is part one, right? So we have, have a concept of a series, uh, which I think I've already created, but we need to link that to the stream and expose that in the UI to be able to say, hey, this ser this the stream that I'm adding into uh, Glomic Telegram is part of a series. Then when I click the button to automatically create the episodes from the stream, I want to copy that, link that series into the individual episodes as well, I think. I mean, alternatively, the episodes are linked to the stream and the stream would be linked to the, the series, but it might be the case where I have a stream where like there's multiple parts. And I think I, I would rather I would rather be able to have those things be independent, right? So an episode could be from the video from a stream, but then that episode could actually be part of, like the episodes in the stream could be part of two different series. I think more generally, like thinking like 
outside of the specific use case that I'm trying to do right now. More generally, I might want to think about renaming stream as as like an, an entity and a you know a, a, a kind of thing in the system into more of like a recording or a session something like that where it's this is you know just a more general concept where maybe it's like maybe I'm not streaming but I'm just recording locally and I could be recording multiple episodes in you know a time frame um, so anyway, that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. And so I would want to have those individual episodes linked directly to the series, which means what I want to do for my own convenience is make it so that when I'm on the stream view and I split it into episodes, all the episodes get, uh, copied in the series from the stream, assuming there is one. Um, and then the third part of this uh, thing that I want to do, add next order index values. What does that mean? Well, so I have a field that I call the order index. It's basically the, um, what is the, the position in the playlist of the episode? Like what episode number is it? It could just, it could, the field could have been called episode number, but it's what it's called. Um, and so what I would like for it to do as it's creating these episodes, because it's going to create them in order, basically from the, the chronological order from the stream. Um, but it should look at the existing episodes for the series and then add one to the last episode order index and then increment that for each episode that it creates, right? So that'll be interesting. We could probably do that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that in um, in the credit API backend because that's where, that's, that's what we're calling into from the front end. Um, hmm, how is that actually gonna work though? Right, so how it works today is in the front end, we're pulling data. Hey, Brainless, good morning. Welcome in. Um, it's pulling in the kind of the stream data and then it calls the uh, backend API to create each episode separately. Maybe what that means is I need, ooh, maybe what we need to do, let's, uh, let's make a list here. Okay. I mean, first and foremost, all the things that are in the title are, uh, things to do in the list, populate series and episodes. Yep. Uh, add next order index value, uh, to each app, uh, and then the thing I was thinking about though is maybe how am I? I'm I'm doing good. Just realizing the the last drip of coffee <laughs> is about to be had. There it goes. Um, but yeah, it's just another Sunday morning. Oh, how are you? Um, right, so the series uh, can get last order index that exists for a series, right? So this will let the front end know. Hmm. This is not in it. If this was a situation where there were multiple people interacting with this, this could be problematic. 
it's fine for now. Five years from now, it's maybe like, why, why is it this way? Well, there's a reason. It, it made sense at the time. What we'll, we'll have is that the front end will request the information about the series from the back end. That will include the last index value. And that way we can go from that. And then the front end, when we're creating the episode records, to send to the back end, we can say it's, you know, n plus one, n plus two, n plus three. That will mean that we can still, because I'm pretty sure in the front end right now, we are creating all three episodes in like um, um, a set of parallel requests, I think is how that's working. Okay. Uh, cold about to turn on the heater. Yes. Cold mornings are a problem. I, um, I guess it's been a while now. It's been longer than since I've been streaming, but the room that I stream from, uh, kind of my, is, is, is also where I work. Uh, it's kind of my like office space and it used to be my bedroom, but then before I started streaming, I moved, uh, upstairs. And for the longest time, had a lot of issues with uh, it being too hot or too cold, and basically just the the house ventilation, the central uh, heating, not really working up there. Until eventually, uh, actually, it took getting a new furnace to actually bother, like me personally, going down to the the ducts in the basement, uh, and actually checking the like the 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 veins that are in the ducts that control like how much air goes through in different directions and uh, it was it was all messed up and basically just mostly shut off there was very little getting up upstairs so <laughs> you used to have a lot of cold mornings and now that's all fixed uh, is that over there? There we go. Okay. So we are still building. good if we could more effectively cash <laughs> this step. It's really slow installing that package. Okay, okay, okay. So now that the uh, image uh, versions are slightly more penned, they're not just the latest. I mean, granted, there might be like minor versions for Rust or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm not sure to what extent this is actually going to resolve the issue of every week. It seems like we have to rebuild everything, but uh, at least they did something. Okay, so, is everything running now okay, in containers? Uh, Twitch bot shouldn't be running because that's not on the current branch. Everything else is running. Cool, all right. I was also seeing something weird. Uh, can I see the Docker file which is taking so long? It's just the one Docker file. <laughs> everything uses the same Docker file, right? This one. Um, which to be fair means that like this step, we only need for one container. Honestly, you know, what would at this point have sa saved me probably a, 
an hour or two of waiting would be to like take um like take this part like to I don't know to here or whatever move this into a separate docker file and build my own base image for the runtime and then have that built and maybe just push it to uh, Docker Hub and use that. Yeah. So I could do that, and I might do that. <laughs> but uh, let's let's not right now. Okay. So I wanna I wanna work on this, assuming this is working again. I got something really weird where I was putting to the back end and I was getting some binary. It was kind of odd. But uh, yeah, what I was trying to do is delete this thumbnail URL and save this record. Two things. One, there's something going on with the front end. I think it has to do with validation of all of our different fields on the other tabs. Um, which ultimately might come down to using the array input from React Admin with so many <laughs> elements and you know so much you know like nested stuff. Um, but if I debug script and it pauses and then I let it run, there we go. Element updated. Okay. Nope, still broken. So that's real weird. Localhost 8080 API record streams. Hmm. What's going on here? So we're trying to call CRUD API. And unless they have changed it, GitLab gives Docker private repositories for free. Um, yeah, I have uh, private Docker repositories um, on GitHub as well because I'm paying GitHub. <laughs> because I was using that for um, what you call it for uh, daily jewel, uh, but this wouldn't even have to be private. Like I could probably just push it onto Docker Hub because it is um, there's nothing. One, this is an open source project. Two, I mean it's just packaging up. It's like Debian plus some Python packages. Um, just to more effectively cache. What time is it? Okay, so is this the request that came in? No, that's the get. So at some point we put, yeah, request that. Uh, request method put. At least with the CRUD API, I don't have to worry about leaking, leaking credentials. I'm pretty sure the Postgres password is like password or something, but uh, it's just running locally. It's not accessible to the outside world. Uh, I get a whole dump of the transcript there. Uh, science detection. This unit statement with parameters, right? So this is updating uh, the database, presumably. And then there we go. Finish processing request status 200. So there's nothing too alarming there. So why here? Does the response payload look like this? <laughs> it 
Is this... Content encoding, ZSTD. Heard of that before? Can I use ZSTD? Uh, data compression method providing faster page loading while using less CPU power on the server. <laughs> Uh, so f what version of Firefox am I currently on? 1.26. So... Hmm. Why is this orange here? Just because... Says supported. But um, is that what's going on? Is that where it's a compressed response and it's not uncompressing it? because of maybe the size? What's different here with these different requests? Like this get is much larger, but it works fine. API records tasks. Content range, content length, date very, um, Accept. Okay, so we're saying that we'll we accept ZSTD and BR and deflate and GZIP. Uh, this one, we also say we accept that. Why? Why this? Specifically for these requests. Can we, so we have, here's a get, right? And this get also has an issue. So if I resend this, with all the same stuff, I get the same result, which is good. <laughs> um, Oh yeah, I have a lot of old cookies from localhost from other applications apparently. Okay, so here's the get um, to that endpoint. Huh. What? Uh, let's take a look at the endpoint. So this is all in CRUD API. Um, stream? Get one, yeah? Yeah, as an ID, it's a get, so that's the get one handler. In the Docker file, why are you copying line 42 and 43 before the recipe JSON file? That's a very specific question. I have no idea. Uh, 42 and 43 before the recipe. So, the Docker file has, uh, let's see, so app, workdir, app. 
So that copies. So this should copy everything from, wait, so what is the, what is the context in Docker Compose for these services? It's dot, right? So it's the whole project. Uh, there was a reason. chef as builder so oh right 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 so this doesn't have we, we've not copied everything in right so this is from chef so at this point right 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 so this can't work if um so all the services depend mm, excuse me depend on these other uh crates common api lib and task worker if these don't exist when this runs then it fails now i could move these below like to there would that make a difference? But I can't move them below the cargo chef cook. I think it could. Well, let's change it. We'll run the build. It's definitely gonna change something now. Maybe. Still taking a look at the file. So we'll see how long this takes and then I'll do I'll I'll trigger the build again. Um maybe change a file and trigger the build again and see it, see how long it takes then. Okay, so get one. Get one is supposed to return uh, something, some JSON, stream view into response, or, yeah, that's the only place we return. So, right, either we return a 404 or we return content JSON, uh, content type of application JSON and JSONified stream view. Uh, which is the stream detail view from results. Wait, I'm confused. What, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, yeah. So that makes a stream detail view. Hold on, can we go to that implementation? Okay, that takes a stream and a VEC of video clip and gives a stream de detail view into result. So why are we doing this? This this just looks wrong. Should be that, right? The other line, which also not sure, feels like a possible issue, is the deletion of file before preparing the recipe on line 30. Delete top level cargo that Tommel. So we did that for a reason, I believe. <laughs> There's a reason. Uh, what that reason is, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, can we? Can we? 
get to blame here. No. Um, oh yeah, I'm used to having, is it get lens? I guess I never get that uh, installed instead of WSL. Stock and file problem with top level cargo Tommel. So, according to the meeting of six months ago, this fixed the problem. What were the details of that problem? I didn't bother saying. <laughs> I tried lazy get. Uh, is it a VS Code extension? <laughs> and what kind of, it's a terminal thing. Uh, no. I mean, I have no problem, you know, using git blame and git log and, and, and those things from the command line. It's just very convenient to have kind of this overlay like this here. Been using it for a few months, loving it. Nice. Yeah, I think we, so there, there's some trouble that I've brought onto myself, right? By, I think regardless, I would want to have multiple crates. Maybe, and I, I do like having stuff in a monorepo, but it can also be nice to like have a separate repository where like, okay, here's library stuff that we're using, push that up, and then it's like a separate build process. And you can pull that back down. So it just has a separate life cycle. But for just me working on it, it's very convenient to have everything just in one repo. But in this case, it's meant that now I have like this top level cargo uh, this top level crate that has crates inside of it. And then when we're trying to dockerize things, it uh, seems to cause some issues. Um, potentially a different way of going about this could have been to essentially, if I if I did want to change things where basically all the Rust microservices were actually just one service, I could just have a folder for like backend services. And then all of the cargo stuff would be inside of that, including the, the lib um, or libs that I would be using, and then the actual like API layer, um, all bundled into that. And then there was, but there would, I mean, just like now there would be one Docker file for that, but that Docker file would just know, oh, we're just building the whole thing. Something is clearly not working with cache, so I assume you need to make changes to every service. Um, as I assume you didn't, I, I have not made changes to every service. <laughs> well, the other thing is, is that I just broke the caching, right? Because I, I moved these steps, right? So it, it got as far as here or 
here, but then I move the copy down below, right? So then a different set of, like it had the layer from this point and then now it needs to do this step and then this and then everything else, right? The question is after this actually finishes for all the services, if I run it again, how is it going to behave? Especially if I, you know, I made a, a change to a file, which I think will fix our issue. Apparently, somehow, um, I don't, I don't know how <laughs> it resulted in getting that whatever binary output we were getting, but uh, what I had here was wrong anyway. Actually, let's get, let's get back really quick. So what was the blame on this? Can we see that? Six months ago. Okay, this has been here for six months. Uh, hold on, go back. Okay. They, they both can't have been there for six months. What, what have I changed here? Nothing. Good. It's just my computer is very slow right now. <laughs> for some reason. Let stream view is stream detail view from results. Right. But this stream detail view from result video clips. This makes no sense. Like calling from on stream detail view is always going to result in a stream detail view. So why? Changes with previous revision. Sure. At what point? At what point did I break this? Uh, let's see. Can we? Can we go backwards in time? As it's a variable, it might be invalidated in the cache. 45. Oh, service name? Hmm. Oh, this one? Yeah. You think so? That's kind of... Awkward. Yeah. Uh, well, it it's slow, but it, it has been working for six months <laughs> slowly. Um, okay, how do I? Four weeks ago, misc fixes from yesterday. But I didn't change this. I don't get it. Very odd. It definitely should be like this though, yeah? Uh, try next time running the build with progress plane and see if those lines get cached. Okay. Right, so here, 
<laughs> to do. Um, here is the thing I just changed, and here. I guess it's been broken the whole time. Must be the case. Did I see red? Cached error. <laughs> Interesting. Never seen that? Well, now you have. <laughs> Alright, we're rec recreating. Okay, can I, can I get to the bottom? Alright, I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to go get some water. I'll be back in just a few. And I guess we'll try with progress plank. BRB.